Good morning, friends in Christ. It is Thanksgiving, and we want to wish you a blessed Thanksgiving as we have the opportunity today to get into the Word of God on this beautiful Thanksgiving day. And as we open up our Bibles this morning, we open them to John chapter 6. And so on this Thanksgiving day, we open up our Bibles to John chapter 6. Once you get to John chapter 6, you can go ahead and hit the share button as we continue to build believers to reach out and connect people to Jesus. And so first, we can just take a couple minutes here while we are turning our Bibles to John chapter 6 to wish everybody a blessed Thanksgiving for those who are joining us here live and who will watch later. And as we embark on this morning on Thanksgiving, my question for us is what is your favorite thing to eat on Thanksgiving? What is your favorite thing to eat on Thanksgiving? When we think of a Thanksgiving feast, what is your favorite thing that you're looking forward to eat today? And as you're thinking about what it is that you're looking forward to eat today on Thanksgiving, hopefully you got some good breakfast and a, and a cup of coffee or whatever you eat in the morning to get going. But uh, what is it that you're looking forward to eat today? And what we're going to see in John chapter 6 is a dispute between Jesus and the Jewish leaders. And the dispute has been going on for a while in John chapter 6. We remember it began with Jesus and the incredible miracle of feeding over 5,000 with five loaves and two fish. They tried to make him the bread king. And that's not the reason why he came. He came to be the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, not to just hand out free meals and to be a bread king. And that miracle was to point them as a sign that truly the Messiah is here. Only Messiah could do something like this. And then we saw this debate between Jesus and these leaders and the dispute over who is greater, Moses or Jesus. And the dispute, Jesus, you may have fed 5,000, but you did that once. Moses, all right, gave us manna from heaven for a long period of time, 40 years in the wilderness wanderings. Then Jesus told them on two occasions, yet, but they still ate and died. When you eat and drink of me, the bread of life, you will live forever. And now this dispute is growing and escalating. Because remember, the Jewish people, they have strict dietary laws, and you don't eat or drink blood, Leviticus 23. And now Jesus, in this escalation, is pointing pe people to himself, saying, not only am I the bread of life, but you must eat and drink of my flesh and my blood. And the Jewish leaders, they're thinking cannibalism. And that's not what Jesus is talking about, but they continue to miss the spiritual points that Jesus makes. And that's what we've seen going on that started in John chapter 6, the great scandal, the scandal that Jesus will tell a deep spiritual truth. They won't understand it. And then as they don't understand it, he will continue to even take that spiritual truth deeper. And as he takes it deeper, then they really get lost. And then they're focused on physical things. And Jesus is talking about spiritual and heavenly things. And then they're at odds with each other. And here we see it escalate, and we're going to see these odds come together as it gets heated. John chapter 6, verse 52. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They're thinking cannibalism, and that's not what Jesus is talking about. They've missed all the spiritual truths and the meaning that Jesus has tried to convey to them that the Messiah, the Savior of the world, is right here in flesh and blood right before them. And that's how we perform the miracle of feeding the 5,000, to point people to me. But not just for a temporary meal that you're going to get hungry again and only be satisfied for a little while, but it's a spiritual hunger that Jesus is talking about. And he says your spiritual hunger is never going to be full until you learn to feast on me, Messiah. That's why I've come down from heaven. 
and they really had an issue with that. What do you mean you came down from heaven? If you came down from heaven, that means you're divine. It also means that you pre-existed, and they are not understanding that Jesus is true man and true God, and that's what Savior and Messiah is. They're not understanding the prophecy that it talked about in Isaiah. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Child, flesh, taken on flesh. A son is given, the Father giving us his son. That's going to be the Messiah. And his kingdom will last forever. The government will be upon his shoulders, this everlasting kingdom. And that is what they're missing out here. And as they're missing out, because they are not seeing eye to eye and they're talking past each other, they have this heated dispute and this argument against Jesus. Jesus then even takes it further. Look what he says in verse 53. He doubles down. So Jesus said to them, truly, truly. When he says truly, truly, and he doubles down, it means that he is even taking this deeper spiritually. I say to you, Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. Now, for us as Lutheran Christians, sometimes we can immediately jump to communion. But Jesus hasn't instituted communion here. And so, we don't want to make that jump and that leap yet, because Jesus isn't. But what is He talking about? He's talking about that in His flesh and in His blood, He's going to go on a cross and He's going to suffer and die. And that you need to believe in Him and the Messiah, the Savior of the world, to be saved. And that's the reason why he came down from heaven. And why he is even going spiritually deeper is because they are disputing him and they are arguing with him. And their hearts are getting more hard where he knows they're not understanding. And so in this heated exchange, he's doubling down. He goes on to say, whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks on my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up on the last day. Whoever believes that I truly am Son of God and Son of Man, that I'm true man and true God, here in flesh and blood, and I'm going to suffer and die, whoever believes in me, they're going to be saved. That's how we get to heaven, by believing and trusting in Jesus, by the simple belief that, yes, Jesus is the Messiah. He died on the cross for me. That's how we are saved. It's not by going to church. It's not by doing good works. It's not by doing devotions. Those are all great things to keep our faith strong, but we get to heaven by believing in Jesus. John 3, 16, which he's already said chapters before John chapter 6 here. And he goes on to say, I will raise him up on the last day. That's what we hunger for, brothers and sisters in Christ, that last day when Jesus comes again and he makes everything right. And then we get to receive the ultimate feast, the heavenly feast, giving thanks and praise in heaven. And that's what we long for. He goes on to say in verse 55, For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever feeds on my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever feeds on me, he also will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Not like the bread the fathers ate and died. Whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Jesus is saying truly he is the bread of life. He is greater than wonder bread because he truly is the Savior, the Messiah of the world. And that only he is the one who can truly satisfy our heart and our soul and our desires. And he is the only one who lasts and rules and reigns forever. And even though he hasn't instituted communion yet, we know that he will. And when he does, before going to the cross, we know as Lutheran Christians what that means for us. That in a spiritual way, when we commune with the Lord and we're taking the bread and the wine, that in a spiritual way, in a divine mystery that's hard for us to understand, it unites us with Jesus' body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And in a physical way, it's just bread and wine. But in a spiritual way, it's the true body and blood of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins and for the assurance of our salvation that we are communing with the Lord. And that's what's going on here is Jesus is communing with the people as he has come down from heaven and he's living and walking among them. It's the incarnation, the word made 
flesh. And what he's saying is that if you're going to believe in me, you're going to live forever. But if you're going to reject me, if you're going to argue against me, if you're not going to believe, then you're not going to have eternal life. He goes on to end this little section. Jesus said these things in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. And so we see this, this dispute and debate with the Jews and Jesus as they don't truly understand the Messiah, the Savior of the world, and his teaching and the reason why he has come. Now on this Thanksgiving Day, we ask the question, you know, what are you looking forward to eat today? And as we ask that question, it points us that today as we get together with family or friends and we thank God for all the blessings he gives to us each and every day that we never take it for granted, it points us to the true ultimate day of Thanksgiving and the ultimate feast. And that is when we are communing with our Lord forever in heaven. And so we long for that day. And as we long for that day, we continue to stay strong and faithful, believing and trusting in Jesus. As we have our Thanksgiving today, it's a great opportunity for us as Christians to be salt and light. And so I pray that your conversations with family and friends today will be salt and light conversations. Conversations of love, encouragement, support, thanks and praise where you are lifting people up and pointing them to the one who was lifted up on our behalf, and that is Jesus. And one of the great opportunities you have is to pray before the meal and to be able to pray and point people to Jesus in that meal of the hope that we have. And so I pray today that your conversations are godly, that they're uplifting, that they're pointing people to Jesus, and that it's not like the conversation today in our devotion where it's an argument, it's a debate, it's a dispute where people are just talking past each other, what Jesus is doing with the Jewish leaders, but that's a conversation focused on drawing closer to each other and closer to Jesus. We pray today that you have a blessed Thanksgiving. Let's bow our heads and let's pray and give thanks. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for this day, as we're thankful for every day, for every day truly is a gift from you, Lord. And we're thankful for the gift of life, the gift of eternal life made possible through our Savior, Jesus Christ, of what he did for us on the cross. And what a wonderful gift, his perfect, ultimate sacrifice. And we're thankful, Lord, that you have called us into this saving faith by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you would bless family and friends on this Thanksgiving day, that you would bless our nation, that today is an opportunity for us to look up and thank and praise you for all the blessings that we have. And it's an opportunity for us to draw closer to you and closer to one another. I pray for all the families who are gathered around tables today and eat. And I pray, Lord, that their conversations will be godly, that they will be encouraging and supportive. And I pray that it's an opportunity for families and friends to come together. Wherever there is dispute, I pray that your love will build bridges, not walls today. And Lord, we pray for the least of these, for those on Thanksgiving who are suffering, those who are homeless, those that find themselves alone, Lord. We pray that you'll raise up Christians and ministries around them to be able to provide food and also comfort and support and prayers to help them in their walk as you continue to bless us to be a blessing. Continue to bless your kingdom with kingdom builders as we continue to go out today to be on mission, on mission for you, to build believers, to reach out and connect people to you, Jesus, in whose name we pray and give thanks today and always. And all God's people said, amen. Have a blessed Thanksgiving in Christ.